um, uh, you know, we are living in uh, chaotic times, you know, unprecedented uh, chaotic times. So, um, you know, uh, two years ago, almost three years ago, it started out with COVID. Um, and, you know, we all seen that that has been uh, resulting in lockdowns and lockdowns on a personal uh, matter, you know, uh, that resulted in a lot of uh, e-commerce uh, buying, but also shortages because lockdown of factories. And as a result, prices went up, fuel prices went up, and uh, we already saw a decline uh, in spending, and we saw it earlier this year that uh, e-commerce is going down uh, compared to a year ago. Obviously, uh, shops are opening up, um, so uh, e-commerce is going down. So unprecedented uh, 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 ripple effects we've seen. And now we see inflation popping up, and it's already uh, you know, predicted by me last year, not to a level that we see now. So inflation is also a thing of uh, the present right now. And um, next, uh, February 24th this year, uh, a black swan to a lot of us, but not to the military in the US and the UK and NATO forces. The war in Ukraine started. And as a, as a result, we saw that you know, uh, gas supply were shortages because of uh, the Russians, and et cetera. And now we're getting to huge inflation. And now we're getting into a real recession. So the whole meaning of this is, you know, we have seen unprecedented uh, uh, effects going on, ripple effects. So uh, you are all in the world of planning, sales and operations planning and forecasting. And if you look at all this, yeah, it's hard to predict anything right now. And that's uh, the, the theme of today, you know, how do we resolve all this? Um, and you see, there are two major happenings here on the slides, one and two. Uh, who should guess what's uh, the third one coming up next. I know it will be the return of Trump. That, you know, that could be the major massive global effect on this. You're laughing about it. You, know, you, know, you don't know what will happen about that. So that's also we have to look in the, in the future what will, what will happen next. All right. Um, unfortunately, these screens are not working. And uh, yeah, you could say it's the software. And maybe it's the software. But we talk about today, probably it's the process. But anyway. So I go back in time. So we are all writing, publishing about uh, SNOP for over 15 years. So it's good to see you know, what we have published in the, in the last uh, decade. So started out in 2012, we uh, discussed how to start SNOP, the basics. You know, you have to have involvement with sales and, um, and you have to uh, beware of uh, the pitfalls along the way. So that's basically it. And okay. Happily, you will get, receive the slides so you get the cartoons and illustration to, to, to see what's happening on the, the illustrations. And next, in 2014, we, we just uh, described the process of uh, demand and supply planning and matching of all this. Uh, but still, a lot of companies are using Excel. That was uh, 2014. Not much has changed uh, concerning Excel, I think. Um, and what we said uh, then, it's like, it's like a poker game, you know. Sales is uh, sweating a lot and uh, doing their forecasts and uh, over-promising, you know, we can sell this. And supply chain said, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a poker game. So that was 2014. You all recognize it probably. You're smiling, so you probably recognize it. Then we move on to um, 2015. It was about forecasting accuracy. And, you know, um, it remains very low at that time, uh, considering how it's now. Uh, so <laughs> it's even worse. But basically, they were conflicting KPIs. As you can see, uh, demand side and product side, marketing and, and finance, they all have different kind of notions uh, looking into the future and to project uh, what's happening uh, next month or uh, next quarter. So that was uh, 2015. Moving on to, to, to 16, it, you know, it was all about scenario planning. And um, um, you, know, you have to make uh, SNOP uh, financially uh, more relevant with scenario planning, and, you know, taking account to, to the calculation from volume to, to, to euros and dollars. So that was 2016. That was uh, the coming up trend uh, at that time. And then still it was a, a, a challenge to find the right tool to get these financial uh, uh, scenarios out of your Excels or your tools anyway. So it was 2016. We are moving on. So we're, we're now in 2017. Uh, you know, by then we're getting the notion of, oh yeah, we have different kinds of supply chain, different kinds of customers, so you have to do supply chain segmentation. So for uh, different kinds of uh, supply chain, you have different kinds of forecasting process uh, and a whole supply chain planning processes. Um, 
And basically, uh, you have make to order, make to stock, you know, and you have different kind of customers. So we get into the notion, okay, oh, we need to have better segmentation and, and you know, map out the whole planning process with it. Um, and, 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 and we have to recognize different kind of demand patterns uh, all through the different uh, kind of segments. Next, uh, 2018, oh, all of a sudden we are talking about IBP, Integrated Business Pro uh, Pro um, Planning. Um, so uh, basically we were saying at that time, you know, we have to involve um, uh, finance and strategy more. Uh, that was kind of new, it wasn't, but you know, it was new for the whole world and that's why we uh, introduced uh, integrated uh, business planning. And of course, leadership was, was crucial and the CEO has to be involved. The CEO, uh, the CEO has to know what the whole project is. So that's why we, we launched IBP as a community. Moving on to 2019, um, th then we get to, uh, in, uh, yeah, Noel, the, the rise of data science. And uh, that was, uh, well, I would say the hype of the, di of the day. Um, we, we need to have better decision-making tools uh, to close the financial gaps. So we have to hop to the different uh, piles of rocks to get to our budget and our EBIT. But then, you know, we are stuck to each other and that's the whole point. How do we get there? Um, and basically, uh, uh, what we saw uh, uh, about that time, there was a lot of detailed, but m mostly unstructured data. So uh, we, we didn't know how to handle all this, uh, especially for the long term. It's a long way, you know. So uh, to get there. So basically, that's what we talked about by then. 2019, and then 2020, just before uh, uh, COVID really uh, hit uh, the market, we, uh, you know, we evolved talking about Cognitive automation, uh, the, the self-driving supply chain. So that, that was uh, the new kid on the block. Um, we talked about AI and machine learning uh, in, in SNOP, you know, to give it an extra boost. And we'll, we'll discuss it later. Um, uh, is it necessary and already? Um, and also we talk about external data, leading indicators. And we'll talk about it later this afternoon with Bram Smet. So, you know, what can we uh, use as external data to have a better forecasting and a better planning process? 2020, 21, um, you know, we came to the conclusion and uh, we, we created uh, uh, this, this uh, planning tower ourselves to make sense of it all. We have to have a planning tower. So you have different layers at the, the, the ground floor, the orders coming in, then you, in the first floor, you put it in your ERP, then uh, next you have your SNOE, or what do we call it, warehouse management, order management, transport management, SNOE, SNO sales and uh, operation execution. Then we have your SNOP, uh, you're matching the supply and demand uh, 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 for what, the next 12 months or whatever. And then the IBP is a different process. Well, in software sense it is. So uh, you, you, you have financial uh, notion and financial consolidation integration. Your CFO is trusting you with your data and they don't have their own financial uh, 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 system anymore. And, and well, it's, Oh, we're getting back there. And, uh, and then on top of it, you have your end-to-end -end overview. You have your, your, your market demand and you have your supply demand. And you have your environment where you have on a strategic level what's happening in the world and uh, how can we deal with it. And then you have your leading indicator. So basically what we're saying here, you have to have different kind of layers within your system. And uh, yeah, you can go by stairs uh, all through these levels. Or you have an elevator, and maybe you have an elevator means it, you have an integration within the systems. So th this explains what you need. And you know, uh, one notion some companies or some CEOs or CTOs say, we replace this with one SAP system, and then we'll get there. But yeah, y you know, this, this building will be never there or never be used, whatever. So you, know, you have to have these layers. So that's the, the basic point. And then you, know, you have to be settling with your existing ERP don't move your, your, your on-premise uh, SAP into the cloud uh, if it's not working, you know? <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. Next, 2022, um, we're getting now in this terrible uh, chaotic world, uh, unpredicted, and now uh, basically uh, the planning systems fall short in factoring uncertainty and uh, unpredictability. So that's what we're facing right now. So uh, we, we, the first slide I had, you know, is about this chaotic world, this ripple effects, how to deal with it, and now we have to, uh, you know, uh, deal with it in the systems and in the planning. And and now uh, companies are looking for supply chain solutions 
to, to, to cover it, to, to handle all this, and to do scenario analysis, to automate uh, certain processes, and we'll discuss it later on. So this is what we're uh, in, in right now. And the good thing is, you see here digital twin, and you see uh, um, control towers on different kind of level. I know we're talking about sales and operations planning and IBP, but you know, we think, you know, do we need SNOP, or is SNOE more important, or is digital twin the things to solve? You know, all, all of these things are right now happening in, 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 in the, the current world within the companies. Uh, and you have still your ERP on the bottom shelf. Uh, still, do we still use it? Do we use it in the right way? Do you have the right lead times in it? You, you name it, all these kind of things. But basically, people are watching for all this. And what is this illustration is saying, the, 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 the total meaning is you have to look for references. Who is using what? And are using it well? And are they happy? And uh, are they successful with it? So basically, the, the whole theme of today is, you know, we talk about SNOP. We talk about all the things there. We talk also about, you know, you can recognize with all this illustration your own maturity. Where are we at? Do you recognize, oh, yeah, this is where we are right now, and this is going into the future, these kind of illustrations. So this is what I use uh, for to see, okay, where are you at this moment? And we'll discuss all these things uh, during the day. And at the end of the day, we hope to see, okay, do you have a right feeling of where you are, what you need to do, and what kind of tools you need to, to support all this? What we've seen now, so here is my, my, uh, my uh, and now you've seen it on big screen, and, and uh, the good news is you will uh, all be able to have the, the PowerPoint slide, so you will have this visualization that you might have missed earlier uh, this morning. So basically, you know, uh, we are at this moment now, so like uh, Racket Bank, Keezer or Racket, they have now implemented uh, 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 a concurrent uh, tool, so they are building this, this tower. So, um, and uh, so you have your, your ERP, and we've seen it also, you can make more use out of your existing ERP, in this matter it was uh, uh, SAP R3, uh, and you have your SNOE, where you have your execution on a short term, and then you have your SNOP, the main focus of today, and, and, and also uh, uh, moving up, you go to the IEP uh, world, where you have more financial view, where your CEO is trusting your numbers, and, uh, and upwards, you go to your E2E, your end-to-end, -end. Uh, maybe you have a digital twin, of, or like uh, Alberto was saying, you want to extend to your suppliers upstream to go to uh, the, the market supply, what's out there, material, raw materials, parts, etc. And on the demand side, what's happening in your market, so extend your reach out there. And then you get this kind of T-shaped planning tower. So that's what, what, what uh, companies are building right now, to be uh, up to the future. So that's uh, what we saw and described last year, and now you see um, Racket is now uh, building on that. Um, and what we see next is that um, um, uh, moving into, uh, well, the uncertain area, we have seen well, a lot of companies uh, or, and a lot of vendors are talking about next-gen planning, uh, and what is it? Basically, what we see now, existing, existing planning systems uh, fall short, in you know, dealing with the uncertainty and the unpredictability of this world, and uh, I think we need something else. And maybe they do, but basically, you, know, you have to have the foundation, and then you can move on and go to the leading uh, indicators, uh, like uh, Bram uh, has uh, mentioned. Um, but still, and that's the main thing what I see, I get a lot of questions from mid-sized companies, large companies, and I'm looking for some sort of a solution for my, my planning uh, uh, challenges, like all this. So yeah, I know, and I first, you know, you should go through this day, and luckily you have. So uh, that's one point. But a lot of things, you know, are still struggling how to find the right solution. And I have a final uh, recommendation. So first, what we are doing is, uh, over the last 11 years, I created this IT subway map, and these are, uh, this is the European version. So this is the IT subway map for Europe. And basically on this, this map, the, all the major players uh, who have a lot of implementations in, in Europe, so it's based on implementations and also based on the revenue share per a certain uh, uh, um, software line like WMS, TMS, SNOP, ERP, and so forth and so on. Um, and also it's, um, you know, it's clustered who are quite similar to each other. So that's the reason why to, to, to look for it. Basically it's not to miss out any gems you might be missing. 
If you look at the magic quadrant, you have to pay to be in the magic quadrant. And you know, some people are saying, you know, only look at the upper right uh, qu quadrant for the magic quadrant to select one. But, but you may, may be missing out a gem that's totally suited for your industry with a lot of references. And by the way, uh, the, the garden quadrants were never designed for software selection. They were designed for software vendor to compare how are you doing your business. So uh, that's uh, uh, some remarks about the magic quadrant. Uh, and a lot of companies aren't in, in there because they are not willing to pay the amount of money to be mentioned over there. You don't have to pay as a vendor to be on this map, so that's one thing. This is, so this is based on actual implementations in Europe. So that's what, what we have done. Uh, and, and, and there is an interactive version, so if you go to itsubwaymap.com, you can click on it and you can play with it and you can select or deselect subway lines and you have a better understanding of what's happening in the market. Funny thing is, I've designed this, this map for all, over 11 years, and all through the years, looking backwards, a lot of M&As, a lot of merger acquisitions were happening by companies next to each other. So this, this map has a, a, a predictive value, even for, for people to invest and whatever, to look for acquisitions. And, but it, it's quite logic, it makes totally sense. If they are uh, clustered because they are uh, a lot of the times on the, the same uh, RFP overviews, then it makes sense to acquire one if you are able to buy it and it makes sense. So, but then again, it's about, uh, uh, you know, you need the tools, we have seen it today, maybe you have to uh, uh, exercise a, a better execution on your plan and use your tools better. First thing, get rid of your Excels, not the knowledge behind it, but you know, we have to stop using Excel, not robust. If the, the designer of uh, your Excel is leaving your company, well, you are, you know, you know. You know. So uh, you have to make it happen that this kind of knowledge will be ingrained in a more robust system that's not depending on the one who has designed this brilliant Excel. So the thing is what we see now, and I, you know, uh, two months ago I got a request, I'm looking for inventory management software, forecasting, whatever, and uh, a, a, a huge long RFP overview. And uh, it, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, Paced by a lot, with a lot of other uh, Excel, so it's getting longer and longer. So this uh, RFP uh, uh, Excel was is totally useless. And one thing is, when you look at these questions, only the RFP uh, models are looking for functionality and cost, and that, that, that's the major point. Um, so my thing is, and I've created this model, and you can use it, and you can, can tweak it. It's quite easy. So basically, functionality is only one part of the whole thing. If you are looking for software, you have to look for four elements. First, functionality. Yeah, it's, it's quite important what they can do, but like uh, Jonathan Carr also said uh, earlier this morning, you know, in, on average, all this software can do the same. So pff, functionality, they're all fine, they're all good. Um, another thing is about technology. What is the basis, you know, where, what is the, the underlying basis of this technology? Is it on-premise, is it in the cloud, is it uh, already designed for the cloud, that kind of stuff, technology stuff. Uh, do ask for it, also, you know, cyber security, that kind of stuff. That, that's very techy, that's a techy part, very important. But, you know, the lower two ones, so the first ones are mostly addressed in RFP uh, overviews, with this, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of questions. Uh, um, but the, the last two, the, 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 the lower two, first, delivery. How it will be implemented, by who? Often ignored. And that's the basis of our, our IT subway map. Uh, do they have you know, offices? Do they have consultants? Do they have their own consultants? Do they have uh, you know, expertise in certain industries? Do they have their implemented in our industry? That kind of stuff. So these are the questions you should ask, you know, delivery. You know, because um, uh, it's not the software. The software is okay, or even fine, or even great. It's about how it is being implemented, or your process is not fit enough, or the consultants don't know how to do the parameter setting of your, uh, your software, worst case scenario. Um, so delivery is paramount. And the final part, knowledge. What do they know about machine learning, about algorithms? Uh, what do they know about inventory management, forecasting, and are they really experts? Do they write theses? Do they uh, have uh, you know, um, connections with universities? Or do they have uh, an open community to share knowledge about how it's working and that kind of stuff? Uh, you know, often ignored. 
So these are the things you have to do if you do a software selection on, the, on any case, but especially in SNOP. So, you know, how do you select software, you know? And basically, I, I can imagine, you know, if you buy a car, you know, you don't do it by specs. You know, you don't think you fill out an RFQ and then send it out to uh, all these uh, brands. No, you go to the dealer and uh, you, you kick some tires and they say, you know, and you go home and you have, so what kind of cars do you have, you know? And like this, you know, it's a family car, uh, look great, you know, you have four of them and they're all fine, combustion cars, you know, um, and do realize how do you mark them down? So how do you uh, uh, tell the differences, you know? And you see it here, right here, this is my perception of these four cars, and one, of my, and one is mine. Uh, you probably don't uh, guess it anyway. But the thing is, if you go for a combustion car or software on-premise, still working right fine, you know, um, don't ask for PowerPoint. Ignore, you know, if you come in and uh, have a pitch as a vendor, no PowerPoint, please. You know, that's looking way too fancy. Ask for a live customer demo, you know, especially in your industry. If you are a wholesaler, ask a live demo about a wholesaler and then you get there. And, um, and ask for references of live customers, uh, especially in your country or in your region, and then you can talk to them. Because if, if it has worked there, it will probably likely to be working here because they have their imp implementation skill, the knowledge and the references. Um, and ask for what are you developing in the future, the roadmap. You know, you have combustion car, how do you evolve in the future? And the same with this uh, on-premise software, are you planning to go into the cloud, how far are you, etc. But next, you know, there are also um, software systems already developed for the cloud, and uh, it's like the electric car, and also with electric car, you have uh, different kind of uh, flavors already. Um, and you can, you know, uh, easily uh, uh, translate it, you know, electrical cars like Tesla, it's full of machine learning. We all know it. Still sometimes clunky, clunk but, you know, there is machine learning in the, in the Tesla. Um, and they use external data. So that's the analogy with, uh, with uh, the cloud solution. Yeah, when you are in the cloud, it's way more easier to, to ingrain external data in your systems. But still, you know, uh, ask for a reference of live customers if you are going for cloud software. Um, and with a lot of uh, um, Tesla-like uh, car manufacturers, they are still in the early phase. So if you are going for a cloud solution, um, are you aware it's a startup, it's a scale-up, can you deploy it on a company-wide level, and that kind of stuff. So we are doing now a range of interviews with uh, uh, supply chain software startups, implemented at uh, established companies, and why did they choose this kind of uh, supply, up, uh, supply chain startup approach? So we are you know, also digging into this, uh, this field, this upcoming field of new applications built for the cloud, etc. So these are the things. So basically you now have two flavors. You go to the IT software map, you have either the on-premise, you know, uh, um, already around for 10, 20 years, and now you can see upcoming design for the cloud, electrical car, uh, uh, cloud kind of solution. So that's the thing. But my whole point, and I started out early this morning, and then I'll wrap up, and you know, um, I showed you a lot of illustrations about what is your SNOP process maturity. Um, and do you recognize where you are? And, and what we see all through the day, we've seen different phases, different uh, 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 case studies. So be aware where you are. So basically, that's the whole point of today. Are you aware of your, your uh, maturity? because otherwise you would get this. So it's a fancy car, but if you are not mature enough, uh, within 100 meters from the car dealer, you will hit a land post, and that's how you end up. So hopefully uh, you have learned a lot, and hopefully uh, you are careful to build your processes and uh, select, select the right tools. We've seen a lot of vendors, and by that I uh, would like to uh, wrap up. Um, this day, uh, thanks for all the vendors, because Without them, we wouldn't be here. There were no uh, uh, you know, support from them, and we do, wouldn't have uh, all kind of new insights what's happening in the tools. But thank you for the, tool, uh, for the tooling and the, the sponsoring of, uh, of our day. Uh, applause for the vendors to make it happen. Um, 
Um, um, I would like to thank you uh, as, a, as a delegate to, to come over and see, you know, to, to show your interest. Uh, so, and thank you for sharing a lot of uh, insights and inspiration. Without it, you know, it, it wouldn't be like knowledge sharing. And the only way, way to move forward in these uncertain times about sharing what we're seeing and to make sense of it all. So thank you for, for being here. Um, so um, beware, uh, in one year time, we'll do another SNP uh, selection day or uh, vendor, how we call it. So uh, mark your calendar for next year, and hopefully uh, it will be grow bigger and bigger. Uh, n not as a sense, but getting more people uh, sharing, that would be uh, the great uh, point of it. Um, and we will have our innovation day in May, in uh, May 11, we will have an innovation supply chain event with the European Supply Chain uh, Startup Contest. So mark your calendar for May 11th next year, then we will have our next innovation day with a lot of supply chain startup, also on SNOP and demand planning, etc., but also on other uh, sustainability fields. So thank you for now, and uh, last of, uh, but not least, I would like to thank the technology uh, partner uh, of MediaCows, and I would think, uh, like to thank my colleagues, uh, Nicole, Tiffany, Niels and Hugo, for supporting uh, this uh, large event, and uh, applause for them. So thanks for now, um, uh, wrap up, you know, take a drink and, uh, you know, uh, last thing, you know, it's about visualization, that's key, uh, you know, uh, pick it up, so uh, that's also a starting point to have a better conversation and because we have a lot of kind of uh, discussion, what is SNOP, we have uh, created this brochure uh, about uh, SNOP as a process, you can dis discuss it, you can agree upon it or not, or you can, uh, uh, strike it through and make it IBP, but use it for have a better understanding among each other. Good luck with the journey and see you next time. Okay,